Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Frankfurt Village Board. Today is Monday, April 4th, 2022. And uh, we have an electronic participation tonight uh, by Trustee Borelli. So uh, we'll go to our clerk, Katie Schubert. Thank you, Mayor Ogle. In accordance with Village Ordinance, I received a request from Trustee Borelli to participate tonight by electric, electronic conferencing. Um, and I do see Trustee Borelli here on our screen. Um, Trustee Borelli, can you please state your reason for requesting electronic attendance tonight? Thanks, Clerk Schubert. Uh, I can hear you well. Um, I'm requesting electronic, electronic participation because of work travel. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Borelli. I will now call the roll. Thank you. M Mayor Ogle? Here. Trustee Ledin? Here. Trustee Severia? Here. Trustee Farina? Here. Trustee Petro? Here. Trustee Rossi? Here. Attorney Lamore? Present. Village Administrator Pisha? Present. Assistant Administrator Barica? Present. Chief Chalepas? Here. Clerk Schubert? And Trustee Borelli? Here. Okay. All right, Mayor Ogo, we do have a physical quorum here at the meeting. Okay. So we have a physical quorum. Uh, electronic participation is allowed under the Open Meetings Act. Uh, it required that the board had passed that resolution uh, at least one meeting prior. It was passed quite a, quite a few years ago. And uh, at this point, uh, we have a quorum, and I'm asking for a motion to allow the electronic participation by Trustee Borelli. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Petro, a second by Trustee Savaria. And we will go to our clerk, Katie Schubert, for the vote. Trustee Ledin? Yes. Trustee Savaria? Yes. Trustee Farina? Yes. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Rossi? Yes. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> and the uh, motion carries. All right. Thank you, clerk. Uh, now, if any, everyone could uh, join me, and we'll stand and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So the next item we're considering on here, and if for, for any reason anyone in the audience that's here tonight cannot hear, uh, please let me know. So we'll continue. Um, first item on here is the unanimous consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine in nature and will be enacted in one single motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. At this time, I ask if there's anyone on the board who wants to remove any of the items. Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda as pre presented? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Farina, second by Trustee Rossi. The items on here, uh, like I said, are routine in nature, but we will go through these so that those who are in the audience, those at home, or also uh, anyone that could be watching this on the YouTube channel or at a future time, uh, understand what it is that we are voting on. And uh, this is also available on our website at frankfurtil.org. There's a draft packet of everything that we are discussing, and that's available uh, for, for transparency. You can see exactly what this board is voting on and all the documents that be attached in draft form. So the first item on here, the consent agenda, was the approval of the meeting minutes from the regular meeting on March 21st. If there are no changes to that, we will go to Trustee Savaria for the bills. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the bills this month were uh, pretty light, coming in at $376,628.15. A few of the line items making up this total are $1,600 for sidewalk repair on Nebraska Street, $1,389.68 to Arulios for DARE and Student Government Day, and finally $2,000 to the Frankfurt Art Association for sponsorship of the Fine Arts Fair. That's my report tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Safari. Um, then we have two items from the Plan Commission, and uh, we'll go first to Trustee Petro. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first is the Quinlan residence at 247 Hickory Street, and there are 
two variances, the first being a basement area variance and ordinance and the Quinlan subdivision final plat of approval. Applicants Arthur and Gal Quinlan propose to demolish the existing home on the property located at 247 Hickory Street and consolidate lots 45, lot 46, and the south half of lot 47, on which they plan to construct a new 3,492 square foot one-story home. The applicants propose a basement that is 1,971 <coughs> square feet, which requires a variance. The applicants seek final pl plat approval for the Quinlan subdivision and a basement area variance from the 80% requirement to 68.3% to accommodate the construction of the proposed one-story home. At the March 24, 2022 meeting, the Plan Commission forwarded two unanimous recommendations to the Village Board to approve the variance request in the Quinlan Platt subdivision. We have two motions before us tonight. The first is to accept the Plan Commission recommendation, waive the first and second readings, and pass an ordinance granting a variation from Article 6, Section B, Part 2 of the Village of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance to reduce the required minimum basement size from 80% to 68.3% of the ground floor area of the first story or 1,971 square feet instead of the 2,308 square feet of the property located at 247 Hickory Street to accommodate the construction of a new one-story home in accordance with the reviewed plans, public testimony, and findings of fact. The second motion is to accept the Plan Commission recommendation and approve the final plat for the Quinlan subdivision consolidating lots 45, 46 and the south half of lot 47 in the McDonald subdivision prepared and dated 2-18-22 in accordance with the reviewed plans and subject to any necessary technical revisions prior to recording. Thank you, Trustee Petro. <clears throat> now we'll go to uh, a second Plan Commission item on here, and we'll go to Trustee Ledden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The second item is Grace Point Ministries, located at 22660 South Harlem Avenue. <clears throat> A is rezoning from an agricultural district to single family residential district, and B, special use permit for a planned unit development. Applicant Grace Point Ministries, a California religious 501c3 nonprofit corporation recently purchased the 22.66 acre property located at 22660 South Harlem Avenue and proposes to establish a religious retreat center on the property for exclusive use by its ministry team members. The proposed religious retreat center would not be open to the public for commercial use or rental. The bulk of the property is zoned ag agricultural district with a portion zoned R2 single family residential district. The applicant requests approval to rezone the entirety of the property to R2 with a special use permit for a planned unit development. At its March 24, 2022 public hearing on the project, the Plan Commission forwarded two unanimous recommendations to the Village Board to approve the request subject to several conditions. The first motion before us is to accept the Plan Commission recommendation, waive the first and second readings, and pass an ordinance granting the zoning map amendment from Agricultural District, AG, and Single Family Residential, R2, to Single Family Residential District, R2, for the property located at 22660 South Harlem Avenue, in accordance with the reviewed plans, public testimony, and findings of fact. The second motion is to accept the Plan Commission recommendation, waive the first and second readings, and pass an ordinance granting a special use permit for a planned unit development including an exception from Article 6, Section B, Part 1 of the Village of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, which requires a minimum 100-foot lot width standard, and from Article 9, Section 9.5 of the Village of Frankfurt Land Subdivision Regulations, which requires lot dimensions to conform to the requirements of the Village of Frankfurt Zone Ordinance to allow continuation of a lot which has zero street frontage, as well as any other dimensional exceptions as may be necessary to accommodate a proposed religious retreat center for the property located at 22660 South Harlem Avenue in accordance with the submitted plans, public testimony, and findings of fact, subject to the following conditions. A, subject to village approval of the required final engineering plans for the proposed parking area. B, subject to village approval of the required landscape plan slash tree preservation plan. C, subject to preservation of the existing trees and vegetation around the perimeter of the property 
specifically that all trees except those within 100 feet of the three main buildings shall not be removed unless they are dead or diseased. D, subject to village approval of the required site lighting photometric plans for any proposed exterior lighting. E, subject to Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways approval of any necessary permits related to the driveway entrance on Harlem Avenue. F, the submitted plat of survey and site sketch plan shall be approved site plan for the planned unit development. And G, there shall be no off-site parking. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lynn. Uh, those are the items on the consent agenda tonight. And uh, at this point, I ask if there's any discussion from our trustees. Okay, hearing none, uh, we will go to our clerk, Katie Schubert, for the vote. Trustee Severia? Yes. Trustee Farina? Yes. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Rossi? Yes. Trustee Lennon? Yes. Trustee Borelli? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, the following item on here when we go to Trustee Rossi um, is a plan commission uh, item. So, Dan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gale Residence Rear Yard Setback Variance, 19948 Lily Court Ordinance. Applicant Patrick Gale proposes to construct an addition to the rear of his existing home for an unenclosed roofed patio area located at 19948 Lily Court within the Laporte Meadows subdivision. The applicant requests the approval of a rear yard setback variance from 30 feet to 14.3 feet to accommodate the proposed addition. At the March 24th public hearing on the project, the Plan Commission considered the variance request and forwarded a unanimous, unfavorable recommendation to the Village Board for the variance request. The motion before us is to waive the first and second readings, pass an ordinance granting a rear yard setback variance from 30 feet to 14 feet 3 inches to permit the construction of a rear yard addition to the existing home for an unenclosed roofed patio area located at 19948 Lily Court in accordance with the reviewed plans, public testimony, and findings of fact. Mayor? Thank you, Trustee Rossi. Um, this item, uh, essentially, this was, uh, came before the Plan Commission on the 24th. Uh, it was denied by the Plan Commission. Uh, the applicant, Mr. Patrick Gale, has asked uh, to have the board reconsider it. These motions are done in the affirmative, so um, the board will uh, vote either to uh, sustain it or, or not. Uh, and what we're discussing here is the item on here is a setback variance uh, which was set from 30 feet uh, and the applicant is asking for it to be reduced down to 14 feet 3 inches. Now because this was also a unanimous uh, denial by the plan commission, uh, we also have a higher standard in order to vote. Uh, so our attorney, uh, Hannah Lamore. Yes, Mayor Ogle, because this variation did not receive a favorable vote out of the plan commission, this will require two-thirds of the trustees to vote in favor. Mayor, you would not vote. So it would need four affirmative to pass the affirmative motion. Okay. Um, Mr. Gale is here. Um, this, this is not actually a hearing. We are looking to, um, to vote on this. Uh, Mr. Hale has asked uh, to make some comments. And so um, at this point, Mr. Hale, if you'd come forward and then the board may have some questions for you before we actually go to the vote. Great, thank you very much, Mayor. And I did print this out so that I can remain as concise as possible, I, I, I promise you all. Um, so good evening again, my name is Patrick Gale. I am the property owner and applicant uh, requesting the zoning variance to reduce the rear setback distance on my property. Um, we now have a Three and a half year old and a one and a half year old, and my wife and I and, and kids have really enjoyed the early stages here in, uh, with our family in, in Frankfurt. Uh, my wife and I purchased our home back in 2016 from the original owners uh, who built the home in 2014. Uh, the original owners did install uh, the fence uh, at, at that time. Uh, you'll see a picture of the back of my home within the packet, uh, and you'll notice that one of the features um, that led us to purchasing the home was the fact that the rear uh, of the property is adjacent to a small pond with wildlife, right, naturally preserved tall grass, flowers, all that stuff. It's a nice view is really what I'm trying to, to communicate there. 
Um, with that said, the rear of our property also faces west, uh, and we did not expect the hardship that would result from the sun's extreme exposure on our patio furniture, appliances, and, and most importantly, our, our family. Without mature trees, nor tall homes, you simply can't escape the sun. Not only can you not escape the sun from the sky, but the pond multiplies the impact from the sun even more by reflecting off of the pond. Um, is the sun life-threatening? No, it's, it's, it's absolutely not, right? Our lives are not threatened by this. Um, however, you cannot touch our patio table with a finger without burning it. I mean that. Um, and same goes for forearms, right, when, when leaning on the table. You'll even see today that I currently have a covered area. That's where the table is currently located, and I'll, and I'll address that more in a moment. Uh, onto the current solution, and then proposed solution, and, and, I'll, and I'll wrap it up from, from here. Our current solution is popping up four individual umbrellas. Um, those stop providing any shade whatsoever after about 1.30 in the afternoon. And furthermore, four umbrellas lined up isn't the most pleasant sight when driving throughout the neighborhood. You'll see we already have the seven to eight foot covered section of our patio that I had previously referenced. Given all of the factors I previously mentioned, the sun reaches the brick that's under that covered area below that window by about 1.15 p.m. I took a picture on my phone yesterday, um, you know, given, um, I, I went out there to look at that as I was preparing my, my comments. Um, there's no picture of that within the packet, un unfortunately. Um, if you look at the picture of the top view with the addition, here's really what the, the proposed solution is. Um, I'll start by sharing that we've spent three years considering every solution under the sun. No, no, no pun intended. Uh, the three goals we had were one, solve the hardship. Right, pretty straightforward. Two, maintain as much of our yard as possible, including functional flow throughout the yard. And then three, we want the end result to, to be visually pleasing, to maintain the architectural appeal of our current home and neighborhood. The only option that accomplishes all three is to construct a 17 by 17 foot unenclosed addition uh, slash extension of the current covered patio area. And to ensure this visually blends in and maintain the exterior architectural appeal of the current home, the unenclosed structure would match the same hip roof design and pitch of the current home. So it would effectively blend into the home, right? It's gonna look like one home. Um, the last picture I'll, I'll ask you to look at, and then I um, will kind of finish up here. As noted within, it's, it's the one that's looking from the north, looking south. So it's where the home is on the left, and the picture of the side view with measurements are on the right-hand side. I did not have this at the plan commission, nor did I have the measurement between the fence and the structure. Um, as noted within the material I provided, um, the 14 foot three inch setback would be necessary uh, uh, to ensure that you know, I can fit the, the structure. This means it would be 134 feet from my rear neighbor's property line. My proposed plan would not impact the current easement in any way, shape, or form. My plan was approved by the HOA. No residents had indicated any concern whatsoever before, during, or after the plan commission meeting. When, asked by, when I asked Frankfurt senior planner Chris Gruba if the letter I sent out to all of the neighbors within 250 feet was consistent with the majority of the letters he's seen from other residents, he responded with, it's much more thorough. It's the best letter I've ever seen submitted by an applicant. I think it provides a lot of good information. I share that in no other reason other than I'm doing my everything I can to ensure my neighbors are aware of, of what I'm constructing, and I've even had multiple conversations with uh, many of them immediately around me. Uh, as I wrap up, I personally believe this to be the most important information that I'm about to share um, right now. So there is an alternative solution that would not require a zoning variance. The solution would be to construct a freestanding 250 foot pavilion, which is approximately 17 foot by 14 foot eight inches. It's 249 square feet. It's about two feet you know, shorter than what I'm proposing today. Um, again, that'd be freestanding. Uh, it would fit within the southwest corner of my lot, 10 feet from my current home, 10 feet from the rear and side property line. In other words, I'd like to emphasize that although this alternative option would not require a zoning variance, it would be closer to my property line, closer to my fence, it would eliminate more grass than my proposed um, solution, and would be less visually pleasing given it's a standalone structure in the middle of my yard. It would, it would stand out like a sore thumb. We would do a great job and make sure it looks nice, but again, that would not require a zoning variance. So I'm here today requesting the variance that would allow me to solve this hardship in the best way possible for my family and in a way that ensures the end result looks good, which obviously maximizes the long-term value of the property for myself, any future owners of the property, and then obviously my neighborhood, right, the, the neighbors. 
I've spent close to 80 hours into planning this project, which is time away from my family, not part of the decision-making criteria. Um, the reason I share that is I did not feel like I received an objective review of my scenario during the planning commission meeting two weeks ago. So all that I ask here today is that you please consider the facts. I know that you will. Um, the overarching scenario uh, and the options that I have and trust that the sun exposure I'm referencing to is far from a mere inconvenience. I would not be here jumping through so many hoops and spending so much time if it was just an inconvenience. We purchased this home with the vision of spending our entire lives in it. That's 100% true fact. Um, and by approving this variance, I'm confident that this enables us to achieve our vision. The last two comments I would just share is that I did not have that measurement between the fence and the proposed structure at the planning commission meeting. I responded with, I think it's about five to 10 feet. I just don't have that number on me. Hence the updated material demonstrating, I think it's 10 foot six inches if not mistaken. And furthermore, you'll see in the packet what was presented, um, prepared for me um, that was shared was that the uh, size was 25 by 17 feet, which is not, that was not the case. So the material the planning commission had was 25 by 17. I did um, clarify that within like 30 seconds before the vote had, had taken place. Um, so with that, I'll wrap up uh, uh, my piece and happy to answer absolutely any questions that anybody would like to, to ask. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Gale. Um, are there any questions from our board members here? We can, we can start with each member. Uh, Trustee Rossi, are there any questions? I have none at this time. Okay, hey, Trustee Petro. Thank you, Mayor Ogle. Thank you for additional pictures. Forgive me if I'm still just a little confused as to what was the missing piece from the 10.5 that I'm looking at? Is that the missing piece that wasn't presented at the Planning Commission? Uh, or yes, yeah, is it 10 foot five inches? Is it showing the distance between the fence and the structure? Is that what yes. that, yes. That, that, is, that I did not have prepared because I was focused on this setback to the property line, not my fence. Um, and that, that was a big, big point of contention was um, the distance to the fence and I didn't have that number so I didn't want to lie and make up a number. So with that being said, does that change the variance? No, no it does not. Yeah, same variance request, thank you. Okay, Sorry about that. I didn't yes. know if that was a change to it. So it's not, that's just an additional measurement point. Okay, thank you. Co correct, and then the second piece was, it was positioned as a 25 by 17 foot structure, which is not the case. There's a section today, if, if you look at the pictures, that's already covered. Mm -hmm. For some reason that was added in, in the, into the measurement, which, I mean, that changed it from 289 square feet, which is what it actually is. It showed 425 square feet in the material leading up to the entire meeting, the entire discussion, and then, again, I clarified that in the last like 30 seconds before that vote took place. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the clarification. I, I see how that was done. It was just that measurement. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Sure. Trustee. Uh, Trustee Farina. Thanks, Mayor Ogo, and thank you for your testimony this evening. You had mentioned about the standalone structure that you would be allowed to do under current ordinance, and I wanna look to our staff on that. That was the one question I had when I read the packet. You know, if he had a pergola in back, what would he be allowed versus what he's proposing? Sure, yeah, yeah that would be great. Here. Probably for the people at um, home. I don't know. Mike, if you come to the podium. Thanks. Yeah, so um, accessory structures, as you know, were recently changed. We updated the ordinance. Um, they would be, he would be allowed, as he indicated, to have a freestanding structure, uh, although um, it would have to be a lower height because we only allow the 15-foot height, so it wouldn't be the same height as the house, um, and it would have the 10-foot setback. And we also have a requirement that you cover no more than 25% of the rear yard with structures and so forth. So, um, you know, we'd have to do the impervious measurements. You know, I don't have the survey in front of me, but we would check to make sure he met the impervious requirements as well. And I read the packet. I don't recall that the plan commission inquired about that as an option for him to do a pergola. No, he. I believe the testimony from the applicant included that, uh, but they were focused on what was before them, and that was a request to reduce the required rear yard setback for the primary structure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Mike, I had a question for you. So. If they wanted to expand, I'm assuming you're, you would, for that freestanding, you would extend your patio. 
or no? Yes, sir. So does he need a permit for that? And, and I guess the question is then as far as the total impervious uh, coverage, is he then out of, is he still he, within the ordinance? To answer your first question, yes, he would absolutely need a, a permit for concrete flat work. Right. Uh, I don't have the exact dimensions. Uh, the survey's in the packet, but um, if he's under the, the requirement, he wouldn't need another variance. He would be okay. But Mike, he would need a building permit. Were you, were you at the planning commission meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any insight other than, you know, what's in here as far as why they voted uh, the, some of the unanimously comments, against it. it in, in summary, some of the uh, commissioners mentioned that, you know, they didn't feel that there was a hardship here. Uh, you know, hardships look at something unique about this property that other properties may not necessarily yep. have the same situation. And I think it was brought up that some of the other lots in the neighborhood also have uh, smaller lots. Um, and so they didn't feel, my opinion, they didn't feel that there was anything unique in, in, in terms of meeting that hardship. Um, but I can't, you know, speak for individual. I'm just kind of summarizing what I felt. And I think one of the comments was that it would stick out, you know, looking down the shoreline um, of, the, of the pond. Um, this particular house does sit closer to the, the way the, the shoreline bends. Um, this addition would bump out, you know, closer to that. And then if I'm, if I'm looking at this, I'm assuming that the fence is already close to five foot off the, the property line. So really there's only 10 foot from the fence to the proposed structure, right? Right. Which is not a lot. So, yeah. all right. Those are the only questions I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Savoy, are you done? Okay. Uh, Trustee Ledden. Uh, I guess I do have a question for the applicant with with regard to what you would be able to do without having a, a variance. In your mind, what, it, what are the pros and cons of doing what you prefer? Th thank you, yes, so the, the pros and cons. So the, if I were to build a structure that's freestanding, I'll call it a pavilion, I don't have a better word for it, right? But it would be honestly the same exact thing. Um, it would be, again, it would be closer to the fence. It would be closer to the property line. It would take up more grass in my yard yet it still 100% would not deviate from the current standards. The square foot of my property, all the math was done and presented in the, in the prior, prior meeting. The cons of that, number one are, it's again, taking up more of my yard and I wanna maintain as much of my yard as possible to mm -hmm. obviously enjoy for my children and for us you know, as we're running around. Um, <coughs> That's the biggest con of that, is that it's, again, freestanding in the corner, closer to the fence, closer to the pond. And if there was a concern uh, around having a structure, per se, too far back, right, in, in the lot to where you could see it down all the backyards, that is way more of a problem than what I'm proposing to build. What I'm proposing to build, the pros are that it will literally match my house. Like, we're, we're the same exact hip design and the same pitch, the same shoe, everything to where it would literally you wouldn't know it's, a, it's an addition. My neighbor actually has almost the same exact thing. Her house is way further up in her, her lot, so there's no you know, setback issue at all. I mean, that, that structure is probably 20 feet further forward than even my current home, home today. As far as the distance, but, uh, uh, the, the last, I would say, you know, pro is that when it's attached to your home, you can exit your home and remain covered, right? Um, if you look at the way that my property is, that current grass that I'm taking up, is, is um, not really usable, right? There's a slope, it's a two foot drop-ish. And in, on top of that, there's already two concrete slabs that extend past the current coverage. So that's already there, right? I don't, it's not grass that exists. So half of what I'm building, no, I should that, that, I take that back, not half. A third uh, uh, or two thirds of what I'm building would truly be taking over grass. Whereas 100% of the new structure would take over grass in that corner. So. I won't drag it on. Those are the primary pros and cons, and I can go further if, if needed. Would there be an option to do a smaller footprint that would not require a variance? Uh, unfortunately, no. So my current home is 32 feet or so from the, the property line today. So in essence, with the 30-foot setback, I've got two feet to work with. Um, I've considered a, you know, the, the um, an awning, or something. an awning, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that came up during the, the planned commission meeting as well. The reason we're not pursuing that, it's not necessarily the structure that's even going to provide most of the shade. 
as I had indicated earlier, we already have eight foot suction and the sun's getting, getting below it. The structure will allow me to attach the, the very nice, like kind of high end electronic drop sheets for when we're there to come down to block the sun. The awning, it's, it will go right under it. Um, and furthermore, 25 mile an hour winds, gotta take it down. And my neighbor, this is kind of an aside, but my neighbor fell off his house during a storm last year. He has a $100,000 insurance claim, had to get new brick around his entire house. Definitely not the headache that I want to give him. Yeah, yes, sir. Exposure? Right here, what's, what's he, what is the exposure, north, south? Oh, thank you. I'm looking uh, facing west. It's facing west. Facing west. So literally 1, 115, I took a picture yesterday, and the sun's on my house under that covered area. So I so I understand you're going to have that part of the day, but you're not going to have that all of the day. 115 all the way until the sun goes down. It's, I, I pro, again, it would not be here. It, 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 is, it destroys us. We can't even host anymore out there. Can't. So it, it is from 115 until the sun goes down, the sun is, and it gets worse. 115 okay. is this point, it starts to get bad. Okay. Th thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have Trustee Borelli also on, on the oh, line. Great. Trustee Ledden, were you finished with your questions? I am. Yes. Uh, Trustee Borelli, if you can hear us, and you have questions. Um, yeah, as I look at, I appreciate the questions, several of mine have been answered, but I, I will just raise the, um, as I look at the aerial of the, the home and it's it's at an odd location where the driveway is, it has to be extended. If most of the homes on that block are much further from the shoreline, that one just because of the nature of that particular lot, it sort of has to be set back um, further than the other homes. So it does put uh, the applicant in a sort of odd situation where um, he needs this, this variance. Uh, I don't think any other home on it would need it. Um, I appreciate the, the comments and I, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have any other comments. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Um, at this point board, uh, can we get a motion and a second and then we can have any further discussion. Second. Okay. So Trustee uh, Petro, a second by Trustee Savaria. Okay. Um, and again, what we are we are considering here is the setback variance. Um, reducing that from, yeah, you can sit down, Petro. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you for your, your testimony there too, so. Um, so we are considering this, the rear yard setback from 30 feet down to 14 feet, three inches. So that is what is before this board right now. And uh, if there is any discussion amongst the board, uh, we'll go. Otherwise, uh, we'll move towards the vote. I have one more question. Yes, Trustee Farina. Mm -hmm. uh, for Mike, if he put a pool in his backyard, what would the measurements be for a pool? Mike, you, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna need to come up to the microphone, Michael. <clears throat> I'm not. I don't have that uh, in front of me right now, but I could look into it. The pool would have to meet the total impervious for the property. Mm -hmm. That's one calculation. Would also have to meet the 25% um, you know, of the, rear, of the rear, required rear yard. We would calculate that based on other, uh, you know, other items, sidewalks or patios, any, any impervious surfaces. Um, and then the square footage you know, would be um, the we just we didn't change pools. I'm trying to remember because we changed we upped the 144 to went to 250. I don't think we made any changes as far as the total. Is there, the a setback requirement, though? there would be a setback. I think that was the question. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, setback would be 10 feet. For Ten feet. how much? 10 feet. So the pool would go where it says fence to post on his in our packet. It says 10 10 feet by 10 by five that's where the pool would have to land. Right. Okay. okay. And then, uh, Mayor Oba, can you refresh us on the affirmative voting and such based on our motion? Yes. And then also, maybe this is Hannah, if, if this is denied, can he come back in a year? If it's not denied, I, obviously he moves forward probably ASAP. Uh, how does that work? We need to confirm the zoning ordinance as far as uh, 
the review period for a variance. Okay. Director Shores, do you have that handy? If there's, if, if, if something has changed in terms of, my understanding is if something, something has changed in terms of his proposal or dimensions, it could be refiled because it would be new information. It would have to come back to the Planning Commission. But I, I'd have to look into that to confirm that. Yeah. Consideration, but it'd have to be one of the trustees would have to ask for a reconsideration if the vote were to fail on this. But to resubmit, if he were to change his plans, it would basically, he could resubmit new plans, and have, but he'd have to go through the whole process again. Okay, thanks for, thanks. Yeah, okay. Uh, to answer your question, Trustee Freen, I believe that yes, if there was new, new information um, that was different, that would change the, uh, the variance request, I think it'd go forward. Um, we would be looking for, again, we are, we are addressing the variance here, so there'd be four of affirmative votes required, and the mayor does not vote in this particular instance. Um, Discussion today and the additional pictures and I just wanted to share that the plan commission has spent a significant amount of time talking about accessory structures and really looking for the right size and height so that we've had many additional requests I mean frankly we've had a lot of requests but even since COVID people are in their backyards more and so it's become a heightened topic and in listening to those plan commission you know debates and discussions and pictures and staff and everything that they've put together that's that sort of will, I'll explain my vote a little bit on this piece of it, but I really do want to remain consistent with that. I think there's been a lot of good work that has gone into it, and if there is an option that will allow for some of that within our accessory structures that I think are more in line with today's versus our standard 12 by 12 that we had before. Um, and so I just wanted to just share that it has kind of just taken place and has just fallen in. When did we vote on that? Within the last 30 days. Um, of updating those. So I think that that could also be helpful. I know that you've spent some time looking at it before, but there's a lot more guidance around pictures and things that you may be able to do that would not require a variance. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, no, we're, we're going to move towards a vote. If there's no more discussion. Okay. Is there any other discussion from our board members? Okay. We'll go to our clerk, Katie Schubert, for the vote. Trustee Farina. Yes. Trustee Petro. Just got myself sorry. confused with the affirmative motion. I'm so sorry. Oh. A yes oh. is for the variance? For Correct. Yes. Approved. No. Uh, Trustee Rossi. No. Trustee Ledin. Yes. Trustee Samaria. No. Trustee Borelli. Yes. That's three affirmatives, so it does not pass. Uh, the, the motion does not uh, does not pass at this point. Um, thank you, board. Thank you, Mr. Gale. All right. So the next item on here is what we call the mayor's report. And the first item on, on the mayor's report tonight is uh, our Earth Day celebration, which is scheduled for April 23rd. And... Uh, all residents and civic groups are invited to join us for a morning of uh, cleaning up the village in the aftermath of a, a long winter. As we can see, we've got all kinds of paper bags and plastic and things like that stuck in the trees and that. So we're, we all have a part in keeping our, our village looking nice. Uh, so gloves, bags, and a free t-shirt will be provided for all the participants. Uh, the supplies can be picked up at the village hall, which is here, 432 West Nebraska Street on Saturday, April 23rd from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. The event will conclude with a luncheon for all of the volunteers, and you could be working in your neighborhood or whatever else, come back at 11.30 at the Village's Utilities Public Works Facility, which is located at 524 Center Road. And we'd like to encourage you to do that. Um, get your family, get your, your neighbors together, and uh, clean up your own little corner of the world. I think that's a great thing to do for all of us. Um, the village has designated several locations throughout the area that require cleanup. 
So if you don't have a place, uh, please contact Sue Lynchy here at the village at uh, 469 2177. Uh, to sign up for a location. Details are available also on the village website at frankfurtil.org. Our spring country market is scheduled to open on Sunday, April 24th, and that means that warm weather is coming and uh, good times in summer. The hours for this market are from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to our utilities department. They've been working out in uh, Butternut, and uh, that's out in Trusty Ledden's area and they've done a, a tremendous job. We've gotten a bunch of uh, really, really positive and, and nice responses. I know we've had to tear up that area for a while, but this board has uh, committed to an investment in repairing and updating infrastructure, and uh, that is just one of the areas that we're working on. Uh, we have a applications for finance committee, which uh, is now on our website, as well as uh, it's on the Facebook at frankfurtil.org. Uh, these appointments, uh, the finance committee is an advisory body to the mayor and the village board, and the initial duties of the finance committee consist of reviewing the budget, the annual audit, the levy, and other matters that may have a financial impact on the village. These appointments are made by the mayor with the advice and consent of the trustees for a one-year term. Uh, qualifications that we're looking for include being you have to be a registered voter in the village of Frankfurt, you need to have a strong interest in serving your community and uh, also priority will be given to residents who work in or have backgrounds in finance or accounting. And this committee, which is a citizen committee, typically meets four times a year. Um, earlier this evening, we opened up, uh, we had an RFP that went out for uh, to Smith Street, which is also known as the Formilco building. That was the Formilco cabinet shop uh, for proposals for development. That is a village owned piece of property we've had for quite a few years. Uh, the packets and, and all these proposals will be available within the next two days uh, for the public. They'll be on our website and you'll be able to look at the proposals that are there and uh, we will be coming back to discuss them and the content of them uh, at our Wednesday, April 13th Committee of the Whole meeting. And on a final note, I just want to wish everyone a very happy Easter. Thanks. That's all for the Mayor's Report and we will go to board comments and we'll start with our clerk Katie Schubert thank you mayor Ogle um, not much this evening just want to officially welcome my parents who moved in last weekend to Frankfurt and we're already enjoying downtown Frankfurt and they are looking forward to country market starting at the end of the month and that's all I have today oh thank you clerk. Uh, trustee Ledden um, I guess the only thing I have is my granddaughter's turning one next week, so I'll just wish her a happy birthday while I'm here. Very nice. Trustee Savaria. I guess I'd just like to say happy birthday to your granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> Trustee Farina. No comments this evening, Mayor Ogle. Okay, thank you. Trustee Petro. Thank you, Mayor Ogle. Um, I, that was a fast year. It feels like that went by really fast. And I have to say, hearing spring and the spring market, I hope we didn't jinx it, because I would really like some warmer weather to stick around. Um, for tonight, I have to say, I'm going to, uh, thanks to Facebook Time Hop, because it reminded me of why I was you know, serving on this village board. And one of the reasons was to encourage more residents to get involved. And as you heard from Mayor Ogle just now, we've had a plan commission opening with record number of people coming out to want to be part in serving in our community. And now another opportunity with this finance committee. Um, and, and as I sit here today and you know, think about the encouragement of people coming to a meeting or reaching out to your village board about areas that you care about, I just want to say, like, keep it coming, Frankfurt. It just, I'm encouraged by what you have to say. I love that we're all getting involved. I take the comments that we get seriously. Now new proposals. Um, new committees, it's just an exciting time. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Rossi. Just one comment I'd love to see us all support our local high schools. On April 8th and 15th, they actually have a fish fry at Lincoln Way East. What makes it unique though, the theatrical group, the music group will be performing during the fish fry for everyone's entertainment. So if you could make it, it would, I think it would be a really nice thing. Thank you, Trustee Rossi. Uh, actually, we'll be there at the fish fry this Friday, so. Uh, and then we have Trustee Borelli, who is participating our electronically. Uh, Adam? Uh, no comments this evening, Mayor. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so we will go to our Village Administrator, Rob Pisha, for the Village Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just as a sign of spring as well, uh, we have begun brush pickup. So I want to remind residents that we do 
allow for pickup of uh, branches and at, at the curb. I do ask to remind people that we really can't p pick up bushes. It's really a branch pickup. They have to be at least uh, one inch in diameter to go through our chipper uh, successfully. So I would ask that if you're trimming bushes, unfortunately, please put those in, uh, in yard waste bags, not uh, out at the curb. But other branches that you trim off your trees, we will come by and pick up. Uh, we try to get around the whole village at least once a year. But as I said, I think that's a true sign of spring is we're actually back to picking up uh, branches. So that's exciting for all of us. <laughs> that's the end of my report. Thanks, Rob. And we go to our police chief, Thank Chilepis. you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pleased to announce that we're going to be starting up our Seniors on Patrol program once again this May. So we're looking for some new volunteers. Just a reminder, a Seniors on Patrol program is a program for older adults looking to get active and keeping our community safe. Um, during the details, they can expect to spend one hour. So we're looking for people that maybe have three hours a month to give to this program. Some of the details include um, handicap parking checks, radar details, and trail checks. So anyone interested can contact us at the admin email, admin at frankfordil.org, or call our police department. And uh, in addition to that, we would once again like to remind our residents to lock vehicle doors each night and to never leave keys or key fobs inside of your cars. We recommend checking your vehicles, garage doors, and that your doors are secured each night by utilizing the 9 p.m. routine. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. And now to our attorney, Hannah Lamore, for the attorney's <laughs> report. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, is there any other business? Okay, all right. Um, now we're at the point that's public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to make a comment before the village board tonight? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we will be going into executive session at this point. We'll have a, uh, in a moment, we'll have a, a motion and a vote. Uh, when we come out, we will uh, basically be just adjourning. There will not be any uh, votes or decisions taken after we come out of the executive session tonight. And uh, we do want to thank everyone for uh, participating attending tonight um, we are going into executive session uh, for two items one is to discuss personnel it's under 5 ILCS 122 C-1 and also collective negotiating matters which are under 5 ILCS 1202 C-2 at this point can I get a motion to go into executive session Motion by Trustee Savaria, second by Trustee Petro. Is there any discussion on this? Okay, no. Um, so we will go to our uh, clerk, Katie Schubert, for the vote. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Rossi? Yes. Trustee Ledin? Yes. Trustee Savaria? Yes. Trustee Farina? Yes. Trustee Borelli? Yes. Okay. Uh, we are now in executive session. Thank you.